This is an SWX special sports presentation of the Eastern Washington University Signing Day Special. Presented by STCU and Gus Johnson Ford. Hello folks and good morning from National Signing Day 2016 for Eastern Washington. We are live on this Wednesday morning in early February at Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Alongside the voice of the Eagles, Larry Weir, I am Sam Adams. Keep it tuned here for the next 90 minutes as the signings come in. The fax machine should be warmed up. The toner should be in. Larry, it's, it's game day. If the fax machine isn't warmed up and if the toner isn't in, there are people <laughs> scrambling right now like Matt in Cheney, Sam, because they've been waiting for this for a long time. Signing day is here, recruiting the lifeblood of uh, coaches like Bo Baldwin right there. And so these guys have been waiting for this. They kind of have an idea of who's supposed to be sending in their faxes today. If we start naming names prior to getting the approval, we'll be like Elaine Bennis at Hop Sings. We're going to be banned. <laughs> and so, uh, well, you know, you can't be naming names ahead of time. So as we get them coming in here, we'll have them for you here on SWX here this morning. And looking forward to it. Uh, this is something that's kind of uncharted territory. It hasn't been done a lot. Uh, uh, so it'll be, it'll be fun to see how it all goes. It's not uncharted territory for the coaching staff. We just saw moments ago as people continue to file in here. Uh, Bo Baldwin had a big smile on his face. He's joking and laughing. So Hayes in the barn. He's ready to go. Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, that's the, everybody thinks the Hayes in the barn, and so now it's just waiting to get everything done. They were in contact with people uh, into yesterday, and so I think everything is set to go, and it, it should be a good day. It should be a fun day. There will be some names that are fairly significant, I would think, but you never know whether those guys – are going to finish their career as Eagles. You just never know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, uh, Cooper Cup's class lost a lot of guys over right. the course of uh, of a couple of years. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens with this class. Of course, we won't know exactly what's going on uh, with how good this class is until probably two or three years down the road. But we'll just see what happens. Yeah, and you mentioned Cooper Cup. That's a great name, and we expect to have him on the show a little bit later. But you, you never know who that guy is going to be. The the guy who might be at the bottom of the list on the recruiting class may in two years surge to the top there these guys are still growing by the way that you know the the height and the weight they're listed at right now uh remember these are 18 year old young men that they they've still got some growing to do they can get bigger faster stronger and uh you know th there's a lot of upside and, and a lot of excitement about this year's recruiting class the goal it seems every year larry is to get better than the year before as far as the recruiting goes and eastern washington now has become, I, I think it's safe to say, a national brand. It's the Red Turf, the Inferno, the 2010 National Championship, and they've had players succeed uh, going on to the Canadian Football League. Uh, we've got a couple of alumni here who, who are playing cur uh, currently in the CFL and, you know, guys who are going to get some NFL looks as well. Yeah, you know, there's there's some guys in the NFL like Taiwan Jones right now, guys who have been in the NFL out of this program. You've got the red turf, which is a very significant thing. You've got all these uniform combinations, and kids love uniforms these days with lots of helmets. You see two different colors here. There's a third uh, with the white helmets running around here. So, uh, you know, it, all this kind of blends in. Eastern Washington University has a great brand now that maybe they didn't have a few years ago, and I think the, the recruits are becoming higher profile as, as each year goes. So you see a lot of the assistants and coordinators here, and, of course, head coach Bo Baldwin. Uh, they're all ready to go here and, and have some fun. There is a fax machine, one fax machine that Eastern Washington has uh, said, I believe it's Cherokee Valeria who's uh, on standby. He is watching the fax machine, and then he will be relaying that information back to the coaching staff, back to us. And as soon as there's Cooper Cup uh, from 2012 uh, recruiting class, that you look at that, and, you know, there's a lot of excitement about this team, and, and, but you, you don't know until the fax actually comes in. That's right. And so Joel Vickery, uh, the director of compliance at Eastern, is in Cheney. He checks the faxes when they come in, makes sure all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And uh, then he uh, releases to Coach Valeria that uh, he's the recruiting coordinator, Coach Valeria. So then he uh, uh, will send word to us. And then when we get the word, we'll, we've got some highlight packages. So you'll be able to see some of these young men. And it should be a lot of fun to just kind of see because we don't know exactly. We don't know what order we're going to get them in. We, don't, we know nothing. We're just <laughs> sitting here. We're talking until they tell us to talk about a certain person. And then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. And, and if nothing else, uh, as the faxes uh, roll in, we're also going to be able to talk 
talked to these assistant coaches who have been recruiting. Uh, you just saw moments ago Etienne, who's a new addition to the coaching staff this year. We'll be able to talk to him as well and, and all the assistant coaches and coordinators too to get their thoughts. Again, we cannot discuss any names until they become official, until they sign the dotted line and it is sent via fax here. Uh, into Eastern Washington. Stay right there. You are watching Signing Day 2016. It is a special presentation here on SWX. Eastern Washington football. Hey, folks, the season in many ways starts right now. Stay with us. Folks, welcome back. Welcome to this Eastern Washington Signing Day special here from Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Sam Adams, Larry Weir, and joined right now by head coach Bo Baldwin. We saw you enjoying breakfast and yeah. smiling and laughing. That's, that's good news, right? Or is that a good poker oh, it's face? it's very good news. But I had one bite, and Larry's yelling at me to get up here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's all right. Comes with it. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep a good poker face until we see them all come in. Well, we l look at the list of, of prospective signees again. We'll, once these faxes start coming in, we can uh, share those names with you officially and start talking uh, specifics here. But a lot of guys on the offensive side of the football this year. Lot, lots of players in skill position and on the offensive side of the football. Yeah, no question. I mean, we were, we've been so uh, young on defense really for two years that we only lost two seniors last year. So it was one of those situations where uh, defensively we were looking to sign some of the best, you know, wh whether it be three or four players that really fit, you know, I into our system, not necessarily quite as position specific, but let's get almost like the big board, let's get the very best. And, and I felt like we did a good job of that. And then offensively, uh, it was it was definitely something where when you look at losing seven seniors on the O-line, looking at three seniors at receiver, you always have to be, a, you know, at times a year ahead to three seniors coming back at receiver this year. There were just some areas that we had to hit. Oh, when was this class a little bit bigger, Coach, than you thought it might be maybe two, three months ago? I think numbers-wise it's a little bit bigger, but I think numbers can sometimes be a little deceiving too. Uh, you might see 19, but we're able to break up a number of scholarships. Uh, you, you Once in a while you end up with a, a non-qualifier or two, which doesn't count, kind of like a gray shirt in a weird way, but it doesn't count into your account until the next year. So really uh, it, it still was probably a couple bigger than, than we thought, but things have changed too since uh, you know since the end of fall, and sometimes maybe a guy or two doesn't decides he doesn't want to come back or this that and the other. So things happen along the way that makes this whole uh, process ever changing right up until signing day. We're here with head coach Bo Baldwin of Eastern Washington University. This is signing day 2016, and you know Bo, when you look at the the recruiting classes that were coming through the door five, six, seven years ago. You know, you're recruiting against other Big Sky programs, and, and now it seems, with, with all due respect to Montana, Montana State, I mean, these are, these are uh, standout programs, um, but in many cases now, you're going up against the big boys. You're going up against the Pac-12. You're going up uh, against 1A programs. Yeah, I mean, and, and I'm sure they, you know, a few of those programs would say the same, that they get in those, especially when you end up with battles with certain Mountain West schools and you end up in those situations. But, uh, yeah, it, it's definitely a different deal than it was. It's a different deal than it was five, six years ago. And uh, in terms of the level of, of player that we're able to recruit and the level of player we're able to land, and many times in certain universities that we are able, very, you know, re universities I respect very well and programs I respect very well that we are able to, to still, you know, win that maybe five, six years ago we weren't winning and recruiting. So we have been able to do that, and our assistants have done a great job. I mean, it comes down to relationships and what they're building through the entire year. That's how you win those type of battles. Uh, it's not so much, uh, I hate to use the word sales, because I think it's less about sales and more about building those relationships. And our assistant coaches do a great job of building those relationships and the you know in the last few years you've really seen that develop into uh you, you know winning a lot of those battles come signing day and uh you know but in the end you know it's not a science and a couple years down the road or is really going to tell the tale on you know w you know your success or your failures within those classes and then ultimately also how did you develop them once they got to campus that's the other thing we yeah. focus on is is yeah we want to get them here but more importantly is how are we going to develop them once they're here not just roll the balls out and move on to the next recruiting class when we look at the the list and again we can't name names at this point in time but we see three running backs on this list 
Uh, will all these guys end up as running backs? That would be five over the last two years that you've recruited, or could one of the guys either you already have in-house or one of these guys end up maybe uh, on the defensive side of the ball down the road? Yeah, there's always the possibility of position changes, and, and I like you know recruiting you know athletes, and we like recruiting athletes that, that have that, you know, that, that dimension, that they have that versatility that they can do that. But as of right now, we definitely uh, we want to start fall camp with all three of these guys at, at tailback. I mean, it's a position where we use a lot of guys throughout, you know, a season, throughout a career. And, uh, you know, and on top of that, you can end up in a situation, too, where, you know, two can redshirt and one may not, or two may not redshirt and one may redshirt. So they still very, very easily could end up in different classes as well. And we just felt like, you know, going into it, we were probably, you know, thinking two. We really were. But then all of a sudden we had three that we really liked and three that wanted to be Eagles and wanted to be here. So, you know, you know, it, with those three guys, you want all three of them in your program. So we'll make it fit. I know you're not going to recruit me. I'm six foot two, 200, and all the 200 pounds are in places they're not supposed to be. But <laughs> when when you go through the room, and <laughs> me you, too. It, <laughs> all right. When you're going into the into the living room and, and your coaches too, and and again we talk about not selling, but basically you know you believe Eastern Washington sells itself. What is the biggest appeal of, of Eastern Washington football, of Eastern Washington University? And uh, here in the Inland Northwest, what, what are some of the draws that you're finding with these young men that they, they want to come here, play for you? What do they like? I think the number one thing still comes down to the people. And it's, you know, it starts in the locker room with those players. And uh, that's what you find when you go in, when you go into the, uh, when you go into the homes and when you visit with them, every coach can talk about academics. Every coach can talk about, you know, in, in terms of, of what we're doing you know, in terms of, of family and everything, you know, as a, as a whole. But until those guys see it, you know, it, then you're just a coach in the living room talking about it. So when they get on campus and when they see that, when they feel that true family atmosphere, and when they truly feel the fact that, yeah, we have a 3.1 GPA for a reason. We're working academically, socially, you know, and the parents also, you know, obviously see that and appreciate. Those aren't just words in a home visit. So I think it comes down to the people. And, and it's not just the players. I mean, I'm talking about the administration, talking about the town of Cheney, Spokane, how they're treated, how they feel when they get here. They, they, they feel like they're just, they feel welcomed and wanted. And there's something to that, that when a kid leaves this, they always feel like, you know, they always feel like, you know, I, I, I knew this was going to be a great visit, but they, they almost leave going. It was even better than I thought. We're did here we with Pope Baldwin, and I've got actually breaking news. I was <laughs> going to say, do we get <laughs> no, to name a name? Here. We get this to name a name. Get to name a name. <laughs> look, look at that name right there. It's a pretty good one. Eric Berrier. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. What do you guys think? <laughs> All right. Everybody's All right. pumped. So, this kid, you see his size, mm -hmm. six feet, 195 pounds. Might be a little short of that. Height-wise, who knows? We don't know. He's at he, least 5'11". He's 5'11". All right, 5'11". You see the number <laughs> that he wears. He's got a catchy a nickname, EB3. <laughs> Big play VA, <laughs> size-wise, not fair for the kid probably to make the comparisons, but when you see the highlight film of this young man, there are some talents he possesses that Vernon Adams possessed when oh. he came out of high school and came to Eastern. Yeah, there's no, there's no question. When you watch Eric play and then you see the production, too, and the numbers, he's got the ability to make all the throws. He's got the ability strength-wise to get out of things like you're seeing him do here. But he also, he can throw from the pocket. I think that's what people got confused with Vernon is they got so used to seeing him make these type of plays that they didn't realize he can also stand in the pocket and throw, you know, because this, this young man's thrown for 3,200 yards this year and, and 46 touchdowns. You don't get all of those just on broken plays. But he also ran for 960 yards and 12 touchdowns. And some of his build, too, it almost is kind of a combination. I say Vernon, but those of you guys remember playing Denarius McGee. He has that, you know, with Montana State, he has kind of that, that strength and that, you know, that, that core and that, you know, leg strength to break things too and get out of things. So, yeah, to, to be watching, <laughs> to be able to name names, like you said, and be watching uh, this young man on film, this is, uh, it, it's exciting. I, I know it's exciting for us as a program. And this was, uh, this, he's been our number one guy for a while. And, uh, and, and, you know, Coach Hill, before he left, did an incre incredible job you know, building a relationship, and that was a big part of, 
of, uh, and Eric was one of those guys. When you ask him why he chose Easter, I mean, he loves the quarterback tradition. He loves what's going on. But he also just loved being here, and he felt at home when he was around the people. La Habra, California, about five miles from La Mirada, California. He had a pretty good quarterback out of there uh, that was a Walter Payton Award winner back in 2005. So if he could get somewhere close to that as well, you'd be, you'd be fine with that, wouldn't you? I'd be absolutely fine. I mean, as you watch these highlights, it's, uh, yeah, if he, can, if he can, you know, whether it's Meyer, whether it's Nichols, whether it's Bo, whether it's any of those guys, if those are, those are good companies. And we talked about Vernon. We'll just... We'll just make sure Oregon doesn't get any film on him. So. <laughs> just, just make sure he doesn't graduate in four years. Make him, make him we'll drag it out to five. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so our first signee is in the books officially, Eric Berrier, coming out of Southern California. And uh, drawing comparisons already, you're going to hear a lot of those comparisons uh, very soon to a certain guy uh, wearing that same number by the name of Big Play VA. Bo, congrats. I know you're going to keep busy all day. We're going to get you back later on in the show as these uh, faxes continue to come in. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. All right. Our first big recruit is in the books on signing day 2016. Eric Berrier, now an Eastern Washington Eagle. We're back with more right after this on SWX. The 2016 Eastern Washington National Letter of Intent Signing Day Special is brought to you by STCU and by Gus Johnson Ford. Well, one down, about 13 or so to go, maybe 15, 16, 17, 18. It is Signing Day 2016 here at Northern Quest Resort and Casino, the site, as we bring you the latest signees here on Signing Day for Eastern Washington University. Somebody who knows a thing or two about Eastern Washington football and about signing day, Matt Nichols. Uh, thanks for coming by. This is the second time I've seen you this offseason. Great to see you again. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So, uh, you know, first things first, I, I guess your experience uh, playing, it, it seems like only yesterday, but but what was it, about six, seven? Um, going into my seventh year in the, in the CFL, yeah. so it's been a while. But, uh, uh, yeah, I remember it like yesterday. Uh, uh, this, you know, the kind of this day is bringing back some some memories and stuff. So uh, it was cool to see guys' lives being changed and uh, just exciting times for for Eastern football and and all the kids around the country that are signing today. Was there a sense of relief? What what was the the mood like when when you remembered you you, you signed it, you 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 found a fax machine, you you sent it in, you did all of that. What what was the overriding feeling uh, that day for you? Because I know it was, it's a long process. Yeah, it was incredible for me. Um, you know, I grew up in a, a super small town where nobody had ever, um, you know, gotten a full ride scholarship or anything like that. So it was a huge deal. And um, you know, I remember walking up the steps to the school office where I, where I uh, faxed it in, and uh, it was just an exciting day because um, you know no one in my family had ever gone to college, and it, it was just a, a really cool experience for me. Just uh, um, you know, I remember getting the offer and, uh, and it was like, it was kind of surreal. Like I don't have to pay for college. It was, it was kind of <laughs> weird, um, you know, but it was an awesome day. And uh, like I said, I remember it like it was yesterday. What went into your decision, Matt, when you picked Eastern Washington back uh, back in the day? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of different things. Um, you know, I, I like I said, I'm from a small town, I kind of just thought, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a good player. I'm going to go to, you know, these big schools and all this type of stuff. And, um, you know, really wasn't getting recruited too much. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, I had never heard of Eastern Washington being from California. And, um, you know, my, my high school coaches there said, you know, we got this, this team, Eastern Washington, that's very interested in you. And, um, you know, within a week of even hearing about the school, I was on an official visit up here. Um, you know, I hadn't had too much talks with them uh, during the football season. Um, and, uh, you know, it was actually at the time Coach Wolf came and visited me at home, and uh, you know, they just kind of told me they were excited to have me come and, and come visit there. And uh, it was like kind of what you guys were saying about Eric. Um, you know, it was just a home home feel. You know, being from a small town, you know, Cheney was just kind of that same feel for me. Uh, you know, spent a couple of days with Eric Meyer, which was awesome, and uh, you know, he did a great job selling the place to me, and uh, you know, being able to to see the stats of a guy like that and, and uh, you know, on a national stage, it was, e- it was an easy decision for me. And, and you know, one of the selling points too was at the time, um, you know, there was a real opportunity for me to start for four years, which was incredible. Uh, you know, not a lot of people get that opportunity and, and luckily it worked out for me that way. But uh, you know, the other thing was, 
uh, I was supposed to go on a visit to Montana the next week. Uh, you know, once I think once they kind of heard Eastern was interested, th they started getting interested also. And uh, after my visit here, uh, yeah, I called and canceled that trip to Montana. And I actually called Sacramento State because I'm uh, I'm from you know right outside of Sacramento and, and told them you know a team in your conference offered me a full ride and you know I'm still interested in, in coming to play for you guys, stay closer to home. And you know they told me they had a few more guys that they were going to look at and. So I told him I was gonna I was gonna beat him for four years and <laughs> and hung up the phone. So and he did. And uh, yeah, I had uh, some of my best games against them. So yeah, it was a it was an awesome experience. All right, we see the the, the field. It looks different. Uh, oh my it's goodness. a different color. I'm the not sure what is that color. What is that? Yeah, I, I'm not sure what that color is. So uh, when you came to Eastern, the field was green. Uh, you know, there were a lot of things. Uh, in fact, you never did play on the red field. So, you know, you did a video that was out on uh, social media, uh, uh, you know, uh, talking about Eastern. So, I mean, what are your thoughts now that you're, you're, you're a veteran, you're, you're, you've come and gone about the things that are at Eastern that weren't at Eastern when you were there? Oh, well, you know, things have obviously changed a lot. And, uh, you know, it's going to happen over time, obviously. But, you know, the thing that hasn't changed is the winning tradition. And, um, uh, you know, I think just the game day experience is, is uh, you know, I think has come a long way. You know, from the jumbotron to the the field turf, and you know, just pack, you know, pack crowds. You know, it's awesome for me as an alumni to come back and watch games, and um, you know, it, it's a great place to be a part of. And, and happy that uh, you know, I live in the area still. Uh, you know, in, the, in my off season, so uh, you know, it's awesome to still be a part of this because you know it is a, a great program, and. Uh, you know, I think a lot of kids that are, are are signing here today are are lucky to be a part of it, and um, you know we're happy to have them be a part of it. Matt Nichols, one of the all-time greats at Eastern Washington University. Thanks for coming by again. Yeah, I appreciate it. I don't know if you guys noticed on that. Uh, our highlights looked a little bit different than Eric's, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we liked them. We liked them. Looking good, though. And, and green turf, we love that, too. Uh, Matt Nichols joining us. And, uh, you know, catch a CFL game. See this guy in action. He's pretty good. Folks, we're having fun here at Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Signing day continues here for Eastern Washington University. We're back right after this. Folks, welcome back to Eastern Washington University Signing Day 2016. We are live all morning long as the faxes are coming in fast and furious. Right now, Greg Peach joining us. And uh, is this your first time experiencing this from this side, or have you been part of this before? Uh, yeah, this is the, the first time I've got to come out and uh, – kind of see the festivities and uh, talk to the coaches and stuff, and it's pretty cool. Tell me about this uh, coaching staff, and, and uh, still uh, some guys have, have carried over since your days, and, and talk about that, 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 you know, really, Bo Baldwin told us earlier in the day that really, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's who you trust. It's, it's, you know, the people. It's, it's family. I mean, it, it, these guys are coming here. The families come here. They, they have to trust the coaching staff. No, I totally agree with that, and uh, – I mean, Coach uh, Baldwin was uh, actually the coach that recruited me out of Vancouver. And uh, so it was, it's cool to see that he's, you know, up here at the, as the head coach. And uh, Coach Etienne was actually uh, an assistant uh, D-line coach when I was here. So, and now he's back. So it's really, really awesome to see, you know, the camaraderie with the coaches and uh, just the family. These guys have been here for the last eight, nine years. So, yeah, it's cool. Greg was the 2008 Buck Buchanan Award winner. Uh, the other uh, Buck Buchanan Award uh, winner Eastern's had is J.C. Sherritt, who's also in the house today. So we saw Matt Nichols. Uh, we'll probably see J.C. Sherritt later on, both wearing sport coats. You know, what's what's the deal here? You, you, yeah, you know? I mean, you know, uh, I got a kind of bigger muscles, so I kind of have to wear <laughs> looser, uh, <laughs> looser gear. But, you know, maybe one day I got a sport coat. What do you remember from, uh, from your recruiting when you were in high school and, and part of the class of 2005? Uh, man, I, I wasn't highly recruited, I guess. Eastern was one of the uh, bigger bigger schools to offer me. Um, I had an offer from Eastern and Idaho State, and I was kind of between those two schools, and uh, I think I made the right choice. I think you did. Yeah. Go Eags. All right. <laughs> Thanks very much, yeah. sir. Great Fun. seeing you. We're Twitter friends, but we're meeting for the first time today. <laughs> uh, when we come back, we're talking offensive line. Aaron Best will join us. Uh, the faxes are coming in, folks. We have some big announcements to make coming up next on this Eastern Washington Signing Day special.
Hello, football fans, and welcome back to Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Uh, no, we have not run out of toner in the fax machine. We're all good to go. The paper's all loaded up. And, folks, we already have Eric Verrier, and not only a commit, but now officially signing his letter of intent, a quarterback out of Southern California. And now we are pleased to announce we have four offensive linemen. And so we bring in Aaron Best, who, of course, uh, oversees the line and, of course, uh, has a lot to do with, with this recruiting process. We have a, about enough to now play some flies up or something. We've got a quarterback. We've got four offensive linemen. Uh, we could play what? All right. Play yeah, it works. There, there we go. We didn't have your mic on. We've got it set uh, okay. now. Uh, we, usually you talk so loud we don't need a microphone on. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's uh, let's get right to it. We'll we dive into the list, and, and first let's talk about Jake Blackburn. And uh, uh, obviously this is a great get for you guys. Yeah, we went to Southern California, uh, I think for the first time in uh, my career at Eastern Washington University to get an offensive lineman. Uh, reminds us a little bit of Chris Powers, uh, 6'3", 265 on paper. Uh, got a big cheesy smile, uh, great kid, great family. And uh, I project him or we project him to be a center uh, in our uh, in our offense. So um, he's got some versatility, but uh, his best trait is he plays nasty. So I like him. And a two-way player, a guy who, who played both ways. He's a guard on offense. And, and, again, you like him as a center. And uh, what, what are some of the skills that you like out of him? Yeah, well, he, he's just – he's kind of got an old lineman frame. Um, it starts with a mentality. He may not be the best player uh, on the board necessarily, but uh, you know what you're going to kind of get. Uh, he plays blue, blue collarish. He can run. He's athletic, um, and I think he's smart enough to uh, to do his thing at center. Is that the guy that you you kind of want to see as a center, a, a guy like this young man? Yeah, I mean it's going to be a it's kind of kind of the old school tryout where you're sending flyers out on campus. Hey, we need a couple centers with all the guys we lost, um, and he's going to be one of those guys that hopefully answers the flyer and already has as of this morning, um, but. Uh, I project that he's still got a long ways to go, Larry. Ideally, we would have liked to, to recruit a center out of high school, which has been a long time since we've recruited a true center from the high school ranks to the college ranks. Um, but I think this is the next best thing and maybe even better in the long term. An all Camino League uh, selection first team from Newberry Park High School uh, and also a winner. They won the league title as a junior uh, last year. Let's uh, move on and move up size-wise. Nicholas Blair from Everett, Washington. This is really an interesting story. Late bloomer, six foot seven, 315 pounds. Mm -hmm. Big, <laughs> raw, and big. And the, and the <laughs> thing is, Larry and Sam, he, uh, he's a trimmed down version of himself. Um, when he was a junior and a sophomore, he was upwards of 340 pounds uh, when we first made contact with him as a junior and said, these are the steps necessary to take uh, for you to possibly get recruited here at Eastern Washington University. He did that. Is this the type of young man that you're recruiting now at tackle, six feet seven, 300 plus pounds? When you go back to Clay DeBoard, Cassidy Curtis both ended up, uh, you know, at, at that size. Some of the guys you've got, Nick Ellison, you're anticipating will get to that point eventually. But uh, a couple of the guys last year, Tristan Taylor, Levi Long, both that six, 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 seven range. Is that kind of what you want now at, at your tackle spots? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, Larry, I think it's it's all about levers. If you can be six four and be Aaron Neary and play on the edge because you have great arm length, it doesn't matter how tall you are. Tall guys with short arms are the same guys as short short guys with long arms. Um, at the tackle position. Um, some you grow into the position, a la Nick Ellison or Clay DeBoard. Uh, some are already there, a la Tristan Taylor and Nick Blair. Um, totally different players. I mean, it's, it, that's an abstract painting with all the names that you, that you mentioned in terms of the tackle position. Um, he's a raw kid. Uh, he's got a lot to learn. He played for a high school coach that uh, has done a good job with his first year of that program. So he's turned kind of his football career around, and we've noticed that. Um, but uh, there's no ideal tackle. Um, I don't think it's, 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 there's a lot, of, a lot of variables that go into that. Nick Blair from Everett, Washington, six foot seven with a six foot nine wingspan, and he is a bright kid too, 3.6 GPA, taking AP courses in calculus, physics, and English. Let's uh, move on down the offensive line from Tigard, Oregon, Connor Christ. And you talk about a guy who's got some football and sports DNA, Connor Christ, six foot three, 305 pounds, uh, joining Eastern Washington. Yeah, he, uh, his grandfather played in the NBA. Uh, he's, uh, he's a 6'3 boulder is what he is. He's already a kid that if you looked at him, 
guys he would be almost a ready-made from the look standpoint uh, college offensive lineman. Uh, comes from a, a very good program at Tigard uh, High School out of Oregon, which a couple of uh, teammates already are on uh, board with us. And uh, from, from day one we watched this film, he looks uh, like a guy that could play um, given his size, given his strength, given his abilities um, in, in our system and in our system potentially early on. Left tackle, it looks like, in high school. Do you anticipate him moving inside to guard? Absolutely, absolutely. It's kind of, it, it's maybe, you know, and I'll, you know, I'll talk, uh, it, every year comes gets brought up, but uh, Jace Budarak came as a left tackle too, and that lasted, I think, all of, he says two weeks, I mm -hmm. say two plays. Um, <laughs> so the natural ability with a 6'3", unless you got exponential arm length, you're probably going to find yourself with your hand on the ground being a guard and or a center. So, um with with their offense, he, he needed to play tackle as a senior, but he has and did play center and guard as, as a junior and sophomore in high school. You talked about a couple of the guys you already have on campus from uh, from Tigard, Sam Enos and, uh, and, and Tyson Prouty, a couple of safeties. Uh, so does it help when you have uh, already some success at a particular high school to go in? Because this young man was recruited by a lot of people, and he chose Eastern. Yeah, it, it, it helps from the get-go. And then where you take the ball from there, I think, is is, is – kind of on us and on us as a program. Um, it only goes so far saying every week when you talk to him, hey, Tyson, remember Tyson, remember Sam? I mean, you still have to, to nurture the kid and what are you all about and have him investigate what you're all about. So um, it, it's a good starting point. You know, it's kind of like to break the ice, you know, that I'm trying to date you, Larry, and Sam says, you know, gives you a little, you know, hey, heads up, you know, I still got to do most of the legwork. So um, that's that's the analogy I would have used. It yeah, yeah, okay, so. Um, <laughs> But uh, so it, we don't just rest assured that those guys are on campus that we're gonna we're gonna get someone's with someone's talents. And and it, Larry mentions this uh, Connor Christ again out of Tiger to Oregon, a guy who's uh, highly recruited, highly thought of. Again, we don't play pay too much attention to the star system, but it is worth mentioning that Rivals.com and Scout.com both rate him as a three-star recruit, second best offensive guard in the state of Oregon, so uh, a great get for you. Uh, we have another uh, addition to the signing class, uh, Brett Thompson from Olympia, Washington. What can you tell us about this young man? He's a piece of clay, um, not a big piece of clay um, like Nick Blair, but he's a piece of clay. We're going to try to mold him. He's 235 pounds currently um, doing good work on the, on the hoop court for uh, Olympia High School. Uh, we project him to be a tackle, albeit maybe not a huge mammoth tackle, Larry, like you're talking about a 6'7", 3'10". Uh, this kid probably tops out at 290, 295, but very athletic. Um, a guy that comes to mind is Gabe Jackson-esque um, in terms of his athleticism, but he's got more he's got more juice than Gabe in terms of uh, his playmaking ability. Plays both ways. Uh, very quiet kid, uh, which fits our room swell <laughs> because they're all quiet and uh, except for me, so it works out well for me <laughs> and them. But uh, a great kid, um, and we were recruiting one of his teammates that um, – at the time was 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 interested in us and um brett decided this is is home away from home after high school so uh we're excited you talk about him being a basketball player you talk about him uh you know and, and gabe jackson as a as a, a a possible guy you know that he may end up being how about aaron neary because neary was a good basketball player in high school about the same size as well you ended up moving him into guard uh, is that a, a, a good comparable as well? Uh, yes. I mean, in terms of the basketball comparison, Larry, uh, albeit Aaron Neary only played three games as a high school senior uh, and then broke his foot. So a lot of people, you know, think that Aaron Neary being an NFL caliber player now was just a bona fide high school offensive lineman out of high school. Uh, that isn't the case. Where I think Brett is maybe, uh, maybe ahead of him from a high school standpoint, uh, his film is, is – better than Aaron Neary's because there's more of it and he plays both ways and he plays against great competition. Um, but at the end of the day, when they come on campus, it's not when, when they come, it's when they leave. That's kind of their legacy that they leave. Brett Thompson, the uh, latest commit, and, and again, not only commit, but now signing on signing day with Eastern Washington. Four offensive linemen already. And again, we could just just start playing some football already with four linemen. We just need one more. Need somebody to catch the ball and to throw the ball, or to uh, to run the ball. No, though. you don't. Well, oh, you okay. Well, <laughs> just quarterback sneak. Fumble Ruski. Fumble Ruski. There you go. And, uh, well, you come from the day when, when Coach Zorns used to uh, – 
you know, let the offensive linemen, and I think Coach Kramer may have done it his first year or two as well, let the offensive linemen, the seniors, have a play at running back and run the ball. I don't, you didn't end up getting to do that because no, but that I watched got Jim Buzzard take yeah. a counter about yeah. three yards, and then they banned the play, I think, the next year. So. <laughs> and probably for good reasons. Yeah. Aaron, thanks very much. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank Always you. fun. We, we got to get him as a, as a sideline reporter someday here on SWX. Uh, you know, we talk about guys who can catch the football. Nobody does it better than Cooper Cup. He is our guest next. All Galaxy receiver Cooper Cup next. Folks, welcome back to signing day here for Eastern Washington University. Quick time out, and we are back here at Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Great crowd on hand. Thank you, everyone, for coming out and showing support for Eastern Washington football. A uh, guy who uh, is a big part of the, the puzzle and is back for now one more year, uh, Cooper Cup, wide receiver. Um, have you won any awards since the last time I spoke to you yesterday? <laughs> no. No, <that> was... <laughs> no more? No. no more room in the trophy case. <laughs> Tell me about what the process was like for you. Um, you know, that you know, signing day is obviously a, a special moment in in a young man's life, and and to have that moment. Uh, tell me about the day you, you signed and sent that fax in. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't uh, very highly recruited either. Um, you know, I think like Peach, I I had Idaho State and Eastern, and um, you know, at the time, Idaho State wasn't. Uh, you know, they were in some a rebuilding time, and um, so. Coming on uh, the visit at Eastern, it was very obvious. You know, I love the players, love the coaches, uh, love the atmosphere they had there. And so it was a no-brainer for me that, you know, Eastern was where I was supposed to be. And we're looking at o old video from your Davis days. And, uh, you know, I'm sure are you kind of <laughs> – kind of see that guy and go, boy, w w that's me. I mean, y you've grown since then, um, but, but obviously the coaching staff saw something in you that, that, that made them pretty excited about you. Yeah, I guess so. They just saw something. <laughs> yeah, that's about 40 pounds ago. <laughs> Did you? Have you seen? I mean, when was the last time you looked at highlights from high school? I, I don't remember any of this that I'm seeing right now. <laughs> well, judging by the score, you'd probably like to forget <laughs> that game. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, obviously, you know, uh, Bo Baldwin, this coaching staff, um, you know, they, they've really hung their hat. Of course, there's the pride in defense, um, but – there's there's a lot of renown about the offense, the numbers you guys have been able to put up, and and obviously the, the numbers you put up. I know you're not an individual stats kind of guy, but when a wide receiver, uh, you know, is is looking at coming to Eastern Washington, seeing what you have done, what I call them the three goals, the three thousand yard receivers before you, that you know they they have a chance to be the next in line. They, there's there's something to be said for the tradition that the the offense has for the Eagles. Yeah, and it's a testament to the players that have come through here and the program that Coach B and the coaching staff have put together. And um, you've just seen, you know, year after year that there's been um, successful receivers that have come through. And it's something we talk about in our room a lot. You know, there's a legacy that's been held, you know, going all the way back when you talk about, you know, Boyce and Kimball that have come through. And, um, you know, we remember those guys and know what they've worked for. And uh, it, it really pushes, you know, those – guys coming in you know they, they gotta be a, they want to be a part of, of that too and uh the, the standards held very high and um you know i think it is something that uh is a draw for guys you know people want to be around uh great players and, and eastern's done a, a good job of bringing in those guys yeah, Cooper was part of the 2012 signing class, and signing classes can be fragile. There's not a lot of guys from your signing class that are still around. There's Wimberly, uh, obviously yourself, Jabari Wilson, Jalen Moore, uh, Micaiah Zamora, Zach Bruce, Jordan West. But now I don't know that Jordan off, was uh, – he was a walk-on, so I don't know if he was part of the actual signing day a whole situation. But there were a lot of guys that for one reason or another – fell out so it's number I, I bring that up number one because it's difficult to make it through four to five years of college as a student as an athlete trying to adjust in some people's cases from oh, the warmth of California or Arizona or wherever it may happen to be to the cold of eastern Washington so you know over the years I think I, I, I mentioned that because you need to be commended and, and those other guys that I mentioned need to be commended for sticking through the commitment and being here for five years but it's it's a grind and it's difficult talk a little bit about the, you know the process of five years mm -hmm. at an institution yeah and, and I think it, what it comes down to is the love for the game and, and guys come here and you don't realize that this is a year-round thing that you're committing to and uh, it's gonna eat up a lot of your time and um, you know, you get a, you'll probably maybe get a short break to go home for Thanksgiving if you are if you are able to earn a buy you know, going into the playoffs or if you don't make it to the playoffs and then you have your short 
Christmas break. Um, you have a week in spring and a week after the season, after uh, school's done. And aside from that, you have football going, you know, year round. And um, so I think what you see is these guys come in that have played football their entire lives. But when it comes down to putting in the work and putting in the time for it, they realize, you know, it isn't what they love to do. And, um, and I think that's that's what the difficult part is. And you put school on top of that. You know, everyone has their passions, their drives, their their own goals for their lives. And um, sometimes, you know, football gets in the way of what these guys' goals are. And, um, you know, the guys that you see stick around, I think there's six of us left from my class. And, uh, you know, our, our goal is, you know, to win a national championship and uh, to excel in the football field. And, and I think that's why you've seen, you know, these six guys uh, were – you know, able to start. I think all six of us uh, were started last year, and um, you know, we were able to do um, you know pretty well in the football field. When Cooper Cup announced that he was going to come back for one more year at Eastern Washington, I remember head coach Bo Baldwin saying that's the first big signee or signee that uh, Eastern has for this recruiting class. So uh, welcome back. We're glad to have you. It means uh, one more scholarship and in, in a guy who's uh, certainly uh, proved his worth uh, on the offense as a wide receiver. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, we've got some uh, more uh, signees to announce here for the signing day special for Eastern Washington. When we come back, John Graham, associate head coach and tight ends coach, will join us. That's next. They are monitoring the computers. Uh, we are waiting for more faxes to come in on National Signing Day. Here at Northern Quest Resort and Casino, we are live for 90 minutes to break down the 2016 signees for Eastern Washington. Alongside Larry Weir, I'm Sam Adams. John Graham joining us. We have two guys to get to at least, and who knows by the time we start the conversation, we may very well have another. Let's start uh, at tight end. Uh, Tololo Limo Jones uh, from Grace Davis in California out of Vallejo. So in the Bay Area, uh, we have a tight end at six foot five, Tololo Limo Jones. Yeah, Tololo is just, uh, he's a great athlete, uh, played both sides of the ball, uh, was all conference offense and defense. He's uh, tearing it up on the basketball court right now. He's had several games where he's in the 20s and 30s. So he's, he's a special kind of athlete at that position that we haven't had in a while. Are you worried at all that Jim Hayford might, uh, might see if we can get two sports out of him? Uh, we'll keep Jim away from him. All right. <laughs> so six foot five. And, you know, this is kind of the new wave of tight end. We've, we've seen a lot of people do this. Of course, it started with Tony Gonzalez, guys who are, are basketball size and obviously had that wingspan and athleticism. Uh, but, but most importantly, John, is a guy who can also put his hand down and, and, and give you some good offensive line play as well. Yeah, that – the first thing when the first time I saw him uh, when he got off the plane was just he has the frame to be 235, 240 or more, um, and that's that's kind of what you you know, project this kid to be. And uh, w w with the athleticism and his frame, he, yeah, he's going to be able to do a lot of things in our offense that we're going to ask that ask those position to do. Uh, with both the guys that we're going to talk about, and we, we aren't going to talk about the second guy yet because we're watching, uh, we're talking, we're watching uh, Teolo here. But uh, both these guys are wide receivers out of high school. So are they both kind of projects uh, as tight ends They're, or as traditional tight ends? I, I guess you'd call that. They're projections. Um, I think that position anymore, especially with the spread offenses in high school, more and more of those uh, high schools going to that, that – you're seeing those big, long, athletic kids standing up from a two-point, playing in the slot, playing outside receiver. Uh, and then, like with Tololo, you see him on defense, and he's physical. Um, he's not afraid to go put his hat on somebody, and that was something that, that stuck out with him. And a guy who also, by the way, had a 97-yard kickoff return. And the last thing you need is another guy just wanting to get on special teams. Exactly. Everybody's lining up. Like exactly. He wants a kickoff return. But uh, he, he has the, uh, the resume, I guess, to back it up. Uh, Colton Swain, tight end, uh, Mount Sy, out of Snoqualmie, 6'4", 215, almost the same exact build. Exactly. He, and kind of same type of situation in their offense. He played out in space a lot. Uh, Colton did put his hand down. He, he was listed as a tight end. For, for Mount Sy, and there's a few clips where you see him blocking, and he, he's very willing uh, to put his, you know, go ahead and block somebody, block a defensive end, knows he has to get bigger, excited to get bigger, but uh, but he, again, caught 30, 35 passes, 10, 11 touchdowns, so, yeah, he should fit well into the offensive scheme. Uh, 
you got have a lot of tight ends, young tight ends on this team. So, you know, last year uh, some of the kitty core were, uh, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. But next year I think you'll have Wimberley and then everybody else is going to be pretty young at the tight end position, aren't they? We do, yep, yep. We had the two seniors obviously with, with Terry and Jake and then and Zach Wimbrel. Um, but the young kids are coming along and, and they're getting bigger and then they're learning the system and it's just an opportunity to add a couple more guys to the mix. All right. John, thanks very much. You betcha. Uh, thanks great for Great job. Yep. And uh, when we come back, J.C. Sherritt, former Eagle great, will be joining us here on Signing Day 2016. Stay with us. You're watching Signing Day on SWX. The 2016 Eastern Washington National Letter of Intent Signing Day Special being brought to you by STCU and by Gus Johnson Ford. Welcome back to Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Big Sky Conference, Eastern Washington with a big day ahead of it. We've already got about a half dozen in the books as far as signees. And right now, J.C. Sherritt joining us. Um, you know, first question I've asked, uh, you know, with, uh, with everybody so far, the former Eagle greats that have been uh, joining us all morning long. Uh, you're a local guy coming out of Pullman. And, and uh, what was that experience like for you uh, signing day? What, what do you remember about it? Uh, it, you know, honestly, I just remember the relief because, uh, you know, I, I remember writing my goals down since I was a little kid, and that, that was the final goal on the sheet was to be able to play college football. Um, and, you know, that kind of sank in uh, after getting assigned that letter and, and then knowing where you were headed, headed close to home, headed to a great program. It was, uh, it, it was one of those days you don't forget. When you came to Eastern, you were, your first year, you, you started playing as a true freshman, ended up getting hurt, but you played both running back and linebacker in high school, and when you came to Eastern, you were a fullback. Next year, you were a linebacker. When you came to Cheney, were you expecting to be a, a running back, or were you expecting to be a linebacker? I didn't care at all. <laughs> you know, that was uh, it, whatever I had to do to get on the field, and so, you know, they, they were short at fullback, and it was the opportunity to get to go play, you know, Oregon State and West Virginia as an 18-year-old, um, and, and that was a great experience. But uh, Shea Emery transferring to Canada was probably the greatest thing that ever happened to me because I got to move to linebacker. Well, w you know, the, the one of the common themes we, we hear from, from players who have come to play for Eastern Washington is that they, they will say wasn't recruited very much. And that says something about – the talent of the coaching staff that they they're maybe seeing something in you that maybe you don't even see in yourself uh, uh you heard uh you know coop and greg had two i had one one offer in the entire nation so it's that's kind of the story of most of us you know all the way through since i can remember uh you know the matt martins from lacrosse wash tuckna Nikolai Myers showed up with a suitcase and walked out as a captain of the state champion or the national championship game. Uh, you know, that's just kind of how we are. I think uh, I think the Eastern program identifies character really well. And, I, you know, I think that's one of the biggest basis of our success as a program. All right. So I, I called you out for wearing a sport coat already today, but now you, you've got it off here. So so well, were you just a little warm or did you have to show that, that, that your muscles are, are almost as big <laughs> as peaches or what? Well, I don't you know, I don't I don't want Greg to feel bad that he has a sport coat. So I, I toned it down a bit. Is it kind of surreal for you being a part of this experience and, and being on the other side uh, side of things? It, it, it absolutely is. Uh, how fa how fast time has gone by is, has been crazy. But um you know, one of my greatest memories is when Michael Roos came back. He was, at the time, an all-pro tackle and, you know, came in and talked to us just like he was part of the family. You know, he knew exactly what we were going through, and, and that's something I, I treasured. I'll never forget, and, you know, that's when any time I get a chance to come back, I, I, I certainly take advantage of it. All right, J.C., con uh, continued success in the CFL, and uh, – a great catching up with you. Great to see. You. I, I think one of the great things is you being from Pullman, that uh, coming back every off season, coming back to your old stomping grounds. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. All right, J.C. Sherrod, our guest here on Signing Day 2016 for Eastern Washington University. When we come back, Director of Athletics, Bill Chaves. He's rocking the sport coat. Yeah, he's next. Folks, welcome inside Northern Quest Resort and Casino, and it is signing day 2016 for Eastern Washington University. We have already announced seven 
signees here on National Letter of Intent Day. We will have more coming up in a moment. But right, right now, Director of Athletics Bill Chaves joining us. Uh, first of all, hats off to you. Hats off to Eastern. What a great event this is, and we're glad to be a part of it. Uh, I mean, look at this crowd. No, no, thank you to, to everyone that's here. And then thank you to our great partners at Northern Quest and SWX. And uh, you and Larry are just doing a great, great job. And this is exciting. It really, really is. Uh, you know, our staff has done a fantastic job. Uh, you know, Ken Halp and our external group. And uh, Kyle Bruce has been the co uh, project manager for this. And uh, Tom Holberg's been awesome on your staff. And just it's great, you know, for us to be able to uh, kind of share what we're doing on this type of day. I, you know, people love, uh, you know, the recruiting aspect of, of college football. So it's uh, fantastic. It feels like a live sport sporting event when you think about it. I mean, everybody here, uh, alumni, uh, boosters, uh, fans, we're all looking up and, and watching this as it happens, seeing video perhaps for the first time of these young men who have decided they want to be Eagles. Well, no question. And so so here I'll take you back about four years, and uh, we, we and the coaches can, uh, can uh, uh, you know, uh, confirm this that you know we've been kind of sitting around our fax machine about four years ago and kind of with coffee in hand and those types of things and then last year we were able to do a live stream which was great and then we said let's ramp it up one more notch and like do it live and then invite folks and really it's like in real time we're doing things and as uh, uh as we were talking at our table back there we're you know we're in the digital age and so this gives you an opportunity for for folks that are signing too to be able to be a part of it as well so it's kind of neat can you give us kind of a a play-by-play a, a play of what's going on? When can faxes? Uh, when could kids start sending in faxes? And, and then what's going on back in Cheney as they come in with uh, Joel Victory, the director of compliance, and all that? So yeah, sure. I can go a lot of different ways with this. So I can't believe we're still faxing. All right, so right? Let's start with that. <laughs> can we move I on? Mean, but, well, I mean, yeah. but you know, I mean, I, I, I the fax machine will live in one day a year at least. You <laughs> it know, will not die. So, amazingly. Um, well, after we got the door open this morning because it was locked where the fax machine was. I mean, it was a small <laughs> detail. You know, uh, once that happened, actually 7 a.m. local time is when it can start coming in, which is a head-scratcher as well. Mm, yeah. as, uh, you know, because what happens if I'm recruiting a kid from, say, I'm from Enfield, Connecticut, right? I mean, all of a sudden, they can talk They've to them for a three-hour three advantage. Three hour advantage. Exactly. So we're going to have to get that one fixed. Right. Uh, but anyways, but it's 7 a.m. local, Larry. And then once they start coming in, then obviously, once it gets checked off by Joel Vickery uh, if, from compliance, it gets uh, fed over here, and away we go. And good news, we uh, it sounds like we can check some more names off the list. So uh, when we come back, uh, Great. Nick Edwards is going to join us. Bill, thanks very much for joining us. Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Bill Chaves, Director of Athletics at Eastern Washington University. We are talking more signees here on National Letter of Intent Day. Signing day continues. We're a little over an hour in here on Pacific Time, local time here at Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Nicholas Edwards joining us right now. And... Uh, Welcome. It, I still, it feels like only yesterday that you were playing here at Easter. Yeah, I wish I was still playing. It was an awesome time that I got to play with JC and, and um, all those guys, Matt Nichols, way, way back when, but it was uh, good times. Well, and this is now the situation, obviously, as an assistant coach, that so we, we're not going to talk about you as a player. We're going to talk about the guys that, that you recruited, and, and we've got two more names to add to the list. And uh, first, we will go with Xavier James. Uh, from Buckeye, Arizona. So uh, what can you tell us about this young man? I I'm hearing a lot about his speed. Yes, that's the first thing you'll notice about him. It's, uh, he's very, very explosive. Uh, when he touches the ball, he's going to most likely go six. Um, he reminds me of, of Shaq Hill with the speed, the longer speed um, that he, he, he has. It, but he also has a strength in the lower half. Um, and, and the good thing about him, he's 6'2", so a little bit taller than Shaq, and uh, he has a little bit more versatility. Uh, he is going to be a little bit of work in progress. He's a little bit raw, but the upside you're going to see uh, on his highlight. He played both ways, did he not? So does it help? to get a, a, a receiver who, who maybe is, uh, you know, experienced in the secondary so they kind of understand, you know, how, how defensive backs play? Um, for our staff, no, because when I, when I recruit athletes, they got those guys inside the ball, they want them. So um, I don't want to have the, to fight the battle of uh, <laughs> Simba trying to play DB. So I ideally like those guys just to be the wide out, but it does help, though, to, for playing a deep inside of the ball. Comes out of Verado High School, first player from Verado to sign with a Division I school. Actually committed to play for Montana at the start of 2015. 
uh, and then decides, hey, look, I want to take my talents to Eastern, see what I can do. And, and you should talk about, yeah, right, big applause <laughs> there. That's a big switch. That's a game changer. He chose wisely, as we say. The yes. Big guy. Uh, let's talk about this young man. We talk about the speed and the fact that he, he's a track guy. He ran the 400 meters. Uh, he was the anchor of, of a state championship relay team. I mean, this guy, I mean, you talk about things you can coach. One thing you really can't teach somebody is speed. Absolutely. Um, you, you cannot uh, coach speed at all, and that's the one thing we're always looking for. Everybody in, in the nation is looking for speed, and we're fortunate enough to have this young man, and, um, and we, we, are, we are love to be, be an explosive offense. When you were recruiting kids this year to play at the receiver position, you mentioned this, this young man's kind of a work in progress. Did mm -hmm. you want guys that, that you thought maybe needed a, a redshirt year? Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't want – it's always nice to have guys that can play right away. Um, but the best thing about our receiving core, they're going to learn from the best, um, Cooper, Kendrick, and uh, Shaq. Um, so it's going to be good for those guys. So I could took a little bit of a project um, knowing that he has a little bit more speed and a little more things to work on, and they're going to learn from me. But most importantly, they're going to learn from our players. Xavier, a guy that uh, it looks like he'll be uh, on the outside. Let's talk about Kyle Olson Urban. Here's a guy who, who sounds like he is very versatile. Yes, he is. Um, he's a program guy, and when when you, when I talk about program guys, he's going guys is gonna do everything right. The classroom is gonna be good. Um, you don't have to worry about him to uh, to show up for for weights or anything like that. He's a, a guy that I don't have to worry about. He reminds me of an Ashton Clark, a Stu Styles, um, those type of guys that can. Uh, that is very versatile in, in that respect. So um, I love the kid in person. He's going to be a, a awesome for this program, and uh, he's going to be hopefully a leader one day. All right, we have more commits to talk about when we come back. Nick Edwards, who seems like he was only playing yesterday, uh, part of this coaching staff that is uh, putting together a tremendous uh, recruiting class and now signing class on signing day. Nicholas, thank you very much. When we come back, much more to get to on signing day 2016. Thank you. Folks, welcome back. It is 2016 signing day here for Eastern Washington University. And uh, Etienne and Brian Stranley going to join us to talk about a couple of defensive linemen. Uh, let's start, I, I, I suppose, we'll, we'll start with J.R. Mattia. Uh, J.R. Mattia out of uh, Evergreen, Washington. So now uh, we, we have a, a pipeline to, to Evergreen High School. And uh, to tell us about this young man. Right, and the coach Anna is going to uh, chime in here too. But I tell you, he's a he's a guy that we got on late, and uh, Coach Schmetting did a uh, a really good job of identifying him, and and uh, we got some film on him late. And you know, if you look at him, six foot three, two hundred and fifty pounds, he, he's bigger than that. He may not be all of six foot three, but he, he's definitely not two hundred and fifty pounds. And the first thing that we notice on film is a guy that loves to uh, loves to hit people, okay, and and loves contact. Uh, he plays hard, and then in meeting a the young man, uh, you could definitely tell his passion uh, for the for the game, and those are the things that we're looking at at that position. So he's a versatile guy. Uh, he could be. I know uh, Coach Anna would love to have a big defensive end like that out there, and uh, he could play a, a three technique, possibly a nose tackle. Uh, but uh, he, he's a guy that can do a lot of things, and we're really, really fortunate uh, to get this young man. Coach Chen, is this young man a little bit more raw, maybe, than, than, than some other guys? Yeah, I, I would say there's no question. But, again, what Coach Strands alludes to in terms of the tools that he has are exactly what you're looking for in, in a young D lineman. In terms of, you know, the different fronts you can play with him, <coughs> the position <coughs> flexibility that he possesses, um, he's definitely going to be a guy for us. And he is raw in terms of he will develop, you know, yeah both physically and, and mentally in the game of football. And, and we talk about kind of raw specimens. Uh, how about Keith Moore, six foot five, 290, uh, from Olympic High School in Bremerton. Um, when, when you see this guy, I mean, boy, he's, he's got the things you cannot teach somebody. He comes in, he, he is a football body. <laughs> That's the way to put it, raw, raw, and he is. And at six foot five, 290, uh, that, that's accurate. And uh, again, he, he's bigger than that when you see him. Kind of to steal a term from uh, one of our coaches, uh, uh, his measurables, okay, are off the charts, okay, meaning how big and tall he is. He's six five, but he's, he, he's really long arms, long legs, uh, a guy that played up in here in the peninsula and uh, still really doesn't know um, all about the game yet. He, he doesn't. And, uh, and you almost see him get bored with some of these guys that he's going against. I mean, it really what it comes down to. And, um, 
you know, he was about 245 pounds in, in, uh, in the spring, and you just look at him, you knew he was going to get a lot bigger and stronger. Uh, fun-loving guy, always a big smile on his face, uh, has some energy that way. Uh, but this guy's potential is, is through the roof. And, and again, if you want to make a poster of what a defensive lineman should look like, uh, if this guy walks through that door, you, you, you would say that's it. And uh, so me and Coach N are, are excited about this guy's potential. Um, probably a three technique, probably an under tackle. Uh, he wants to play defensive end, but uh, the way he keeps getting bigger and stronger, that would be a, a pretty big defensive end out there. So we'll see. We're excited to have him. Is it a, uh, something you guys would like to get as a little bit bigger on the outside because you've got Keenan Williams as a little bit bigger guy? Is this guy somebody maybe you could use as a defensive end as a, as a little bit bigger body? Well, it, it's possible. We do have some size on the outside. Now, Keenan is, Keenan is, a, is a big, strong kid. He's about 260 pounds. So we have a nice combination of, of and I'll let Coach Anna, you know, uh, uh, chime in here too, but uh, Samson and, and Soggins and things like that. But, but Keenan Williams, Jimmy Townsend, uh, guys that we can move out there, we have that good combination of speed and size. So, uh, but I don't want to take that. Sorry, Coach. Go no, no, yeah, exactly. Like He's exactly right. And then also, yeah. you know, week yeah. to week, based on the game plan and the opponent that you're playing, sometimes you do need those, you know, 22 personnel type of teams where they're loading up the edges where you'd like bigger bodies out there. And then uh, uh, the next week you're playing, say you're playing Montana, you're seeing a ton of 10 personnel, and then you're, you're, you're bumping your fronts around. So these type of guys, they'll always be a part of the game plan. And uh, that's what I like about, you know, potentially – where Keith Moore is going to go also with, uh, with our packages. Keith Moore selecting Eastern Washington University over Portland State and UTEP also got interest from Washington State and Montana State and a lot of upside. This guy started playing football in the eighth grade, so he's still learning the sport, and he's going to have some great mentors here at Eastern Washington. So we've got a, a, both sides of football as far as the line uh, in, in play here. But when we come back, we're going to talk running backs, uh, some new additions to Eastern Washington University, talking running backs, long legacy of RBs here in Cheney. That's next on this signing day special. All right, folks, signing day continues here at Northern Quest Resort and Casino. It is National Signing Day. We appreciate you spending your morning with us. And, boy, time has really gone by. Uh, we're talking running backs right now. Kyle McDonald joining us. And uh, two names, uh, three now. Okay, we have three. So uh, we got a loaded backfield. Uh, we'll start at the top of the list here with, uh, to, I believe it's Tameric Pierce. Uh, what, what can you tell us? I mean, uh, he, he comes from Berkeley. He's an East Bay guy. And uh, 5'10", 205, I mean, he, he's got the running back build. What else does he have? Yeah. He's probably a little taller than 5'10". I'm going to put him at about six foot and a half. All right. Probably about 2'10". Uh, he's a big kid. He's got great balance, um, great vision, explosive. You know, he, he's got the entire gamut in terms of what he can give you um, as a player. He can hit the home run ball from 99. Uh, he can also give you that dirty run. Um, but what you'll see on tape with him is he's, he's a tough tackle, you know, and he's, he's special in that regard, and he's, he can be explosive. So I really like what he can do. He's a two-sport athlete. He also runs track um, in the East Bay, but he's an all-East uh, Bay kid in terms of football and track, and I think the sky's the limit for this young man. What's his best attribute, Coach? Is it speed? Is it power? I think that I don't. I think that both of them. I mean, he can do both. Honestly, he he has in. I'm not going to say one or the other in terms of this young man. I uh, just can't put him in the box because he can put his foot in the ground, and you see him go for 99, or he can run somebody over all at the same time. So he's uh, he can, he has all the tools that you're looking for at, at tailback. Boy, he's a guy who once he hits that second level, good luck with that. Look, he can catch the ball out of the backfield as well. He can. He's got good hands. Um, Played defense as well. He's a uh, first-team all-defensive player in his league. So hey, he's versatile in that regard. And to play tailback here at Eastern Washington, you've got to be able to catch the football in some, at some point in time. Our second running back is Jason Talley. And here's a guy who the last name very familiar, his brother Jordan playing here. Um, what can you tell us about his, the younger brother Jason? Big. 6'2", uh, 215. Uh, physical kid, very tough to bring down. Um, he will run through you. He can also have. He also has the ability to go ahead and run around you at times. But this is you're talking about just a big, physical, raw kid. Is is you know Jesuits 
uh, kind of an I-formation power type team, so does his speed get undersold a little bit? I, I think so, maybe a little bit. Anytime you hear somebody that's 6'2", 215, you're just thinking that he's a one-trick pony. Um, this young man is not. Uh, he gets a chance to carry the, the workload for Jesuit High School, which is a, a state championship team in its own right. But I think that he, up here at Eastern, because we have so many different things in terms of run game, you'll get a chance for, to see him do some things in some different ways. Well, and Larry uh, asked with the last running back, when you look at Jason, kind of when, you, when you're especially looking at three running backs, and who knows if, if all three will stick at running back or if you find other positions for him, but, uh, you know, you like thunder and lightning, you like kind of like complementary backs. So, so do you see Tally as potentially that kind of bruising back, a guy who's going to get it when you're inside the three-yard line, he need to pound the goal line? Absolutely, um, but definitely don't want to put him in a box in terms of that. I, I think he can also play in the open field um, and do some things and break some tackles and also hit some, some home runs from 40, 50 on out. All right, and Antoine Custer, 5'9", uh, 180 pounds. From a high school called De La Salle, which if you haven't heard of De La Salle, folks, uh, you might want to drink some coffee and wake up. I mean, this, this is a prestigious high school football program that was number one in the nation last season, and uh, Antoine was a big piece of that puzzle. Absolutely. I'm talking about a three-year starter um, for De La Salle High School, started as a sophomore. Um, he, he's, he comes uh, highly regarded in terms of the things that he's accomplished there. Uh, but I think he, what he gives you most is somebody that has great balance and just has the ability to make a play, you know. So you'll see in certain situations that he gets in, you think he's bottled up, but he's not, and he'll, he'll score from deep. And he can catch the ball. He can run some routes. He also been, he has been put in the slot as well. So uh, he's very, very versatile in terms of what Antoine Custer can give you at the tailback position. Not just running backs, but any player. You've got Tally from a state champion. You've got uh, you've got Custer from a state champion. How important is it to recruit guys or who have that state championship uh, uh, background? Yeah, that pedigree is just something that those guys understand what it's going to take and the work that it's going to take to get to where you want to go and the success that you want to have at this level. Um, so that's something that you kind of do look into um, as a coach. Not everybody gets a chance to, to have that kind of, kind of success, um, but it, it does help because they understand the weight room piece. They understand the film piece. They understand all the, the attention to detail it's going to take to, be, to, to win at this level and to, to hoist a title. Antoine Custer Jr., 5'9", out of De La Salle High School in the Bay Area. Hey, Taiwan Jones, he was a Bay Area guy, too. Just saying. All right, thanks very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. All right, when we come back, we're talking defense. We've got some other big recruits who have signed on for Bo Baldwin and company. That's coming up next. The 2016 Eastern Washington National Letter of Intent Signing Day Special being brought to you by STCU and by Gus Johnson Ford. All right, uh, fast and furious, the faxes have been coming in, and I'm just checking the list here. It looks like we have uh, Kedrick Johnson and Callan Kreiner. Let's talk about Kedrick uh, first, a rover and linebacker out of Bush Prairie, Washington, who wants to go first? It's going to be Coach Fetter. Tell us about uh, tell us about Mr. Johnson. Well, uh, Kedrick's uh, first off comes from a great family, mom and dad, uh, two little brothers, uh, just a neat kid uh, from Hawkinson High School over in Hawkinson, Washington. Uh, yeah. The the thing that stands out about Kedrick, I think, uh, on the field is his athleticism and length. Uh, you know, in high school. He was one heck of a receiver, and, and you'll see it here on film. Uh, kind of a safety, outside backer, rover type for us. And he's, he's coming here as a rover and uh, slash safety. And it'll be exciting to see what he can do and, and really grow into. But uh, just a neat kid. Is he the guy that maybe has frame to, to grow into a 220, 225-pound linebacker? Or is that somebody that you want to maybe keep in the secondary? Well, I, I think uh, we'll see. Time will tell on that, with, like, just like with a lot of these kids. Uh, if you're looking at his, at his dad, uh, he could be a DN for us. Uh, you look at his mom, you know, maybe safety. So it's an interesting uh, – yeah, it's, she's a smaller lady in a nice way. Uh, dad, not so much. But uh, 
very good people, but it, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out with Kedrick. But uh, just just a, a neat kid, and you'll see some defensive clips where he's lining up on the outside, and he'll get a few whacks. But uh, great ball skills, great change of direction, uh, and again, just excited to have him uh, right. be a part of our family. And then again, uh, looking at him on the defensive side of the football, six foot three, two hundred pounds, a first team All State selection in two way football. Uh, out of uh, Bush Prairie, Washington. Jeff Schmetting, uh, let's talk. Uh, next on the list will be uh, Cal. We, we call him Cal. Cal Kreiner, this is a great get for you guys. Absolutely. I mean, the first uh, comparison, and I don't want to put too much pressure on the kid, but uh, it's very similar to the guy who was up here a little while ago in J.C. Sherritt. Mm -hmm. Now he's, he's a safety version of that. Uh, but uh, And I say that, you know, the easy part is he's not – he's a little vertically challenged. Uh, but – what I'll say is if you watch his film, and really going back to his, his junior film when he was in Michigan, uh, he was really doing the same thing. He's probably one of the better all-around football players uh, that will be in this class. There's no doubt about it. I think he was a, an impact player at every spot that he played. He's, you know, he's been on the hash. He's been in the post. He'll cover man. He'll come down and blitz. He's a returner for him. Also comes from a, a football family with his dad, uh, being a longtime coach uh, in multiple places. And when you talk to him, you know, right off the bat, you know, number one, you're getting a competitor. There's no doubt about that. But you're also getting a kid that could probably line up the secondary right now, you know, as an 18-year-old uh, senior. So um, we're just really excited about uh, uh, the possibilities <laughs> with him, and, and we'll see where it goes. Yeah, and uh, kind of uh, you you'd alluded to his father, Scott, where, where he's, he's coached at Idaho, Portland State, Utah State, Minnesota, Eastern Michigan, Cincinnati, Middle Tennessee State. I mean, that's kind of like, you know, being a military brat, we're kind of all over the place, and, and the guy obviously can handle kind of adversity. And here's a guy who, who comes on late to play uh, at Rocky Mountain and has success there. And I mean, that, there's something to be said for the character of a young man like that. No question, and, and it's Uncle Scott that's uh, that's down at Rocky Mountain. His his dad Mark uh, is uh, is been in yeah, like you said, a lot of different places. I can't even read them all right there. But uh, great coach and uh, a great person, great family, and uh, you know when, when you have that uh, quality of of being a winner. I mean that's what I see too. Again, you know, not trying to compare always to JC, but he's a kind a kid like that, and the fact that. You know, he, he wins at everything he does. You know, he goes to Rocky, or he was in, back in Michigan, he was second to state. They, they lost state championship and then goes to Rocky Mountain and they win a state championship. And there's something to be said for the leadership qualities that uh, we think he has. And, and Scott, by the way, uh, the, Mark's cousin, and that's who mm -hmm. he was uh, living with uh, in Meridian for that senior year. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, when we come back, we're going to start to wrap things up. We're going to catch up with Coach B, head coach Bo Baldwin, joining us to talk about this, I'm going to say it's stellar recruiting class, folks. Uh, they've got character, they've got size, they've got speed, they've got the measurables and immeasurables. We will uh, wrap things up when we come back here. Folks, uh, we are hitting the home stretch here of signing day. I cannot believe these 90 minutes have just flown by. Uh, Bo Baldwin joining us, and, and Bo, I, I know you've been through signing day uh, yourself more than a few times, but boy, oh boy, this is fun. It is fun. <laughs> this whole, you know, this whole uh, setup and what we're doing here this morning and, and having the, you know, the in real time getting these faxes. So uh, had a blast with this, and uh, I can't say enough to, Thank you, Sam. Thank you, SWX. Thank you, Larry, just uh, for being a part of this. This is this is huge for us, and uh, just all the work that went into this. I know I can't, you know, start to name all the you know the Eastern folks that were were a part of uh, this as well. So it, it means a lot to us as a program. This is big. So thank you. Realistically, how many of these guys have a chance to play next year? Uh, most years, uh, you're looking at about. 20 to 25 percent of your class that's usually the number I throw out now th this year it, it might be slightly different usually with O-linemen it just doesn't happen very often it's just one of those positions where you're you know a guy's gonna uh, usually go five years so so you take out you know a good chunk there unless someone really surprises us so but most years it's it's when you look back it's four or five guys out of 20 or 20 plus so uh, I would probably say the same you know it it, it 
we'll see how it all shakes out. It might only be two or three. It might be six. You just never know. But I, I, if I had to guess, I'd say four or five guys. And uh, to say who they are, right. we never know that. No nope. matter who I say now, who I would have said last February – wasn't the case come, you know, the end of August before we're playing Oregon. So that just shakes itself out during the summer and during uh, fall camp. No surprises so far, and surprises sometimes on signing day are actually not a good thing. But I can't help but think about uh, Vernon Adams, that that he was – wasn't he a day of decision <laughs> for you? Yeah, I was sitting uh, with Bill Chaves in his office. That was a nice surprise. Yeah, because, one of the uh, very good ones. It was, because at about uh, 10.30 at night, I had gotten into a pretty uh, – uh, I don't know what you want to call it, a nice little heart-to-heart -heart with him, you know, just in terms of really trying to, you know, really trying to, uh, in my opinion, push the buttons in terms of making sure he was making the decision for the right reasons, whatever decision that was. And that's just how it goes. And, and uh, you know, another university was probably doing the same. And uh, come to find, he was, he was, you know, at 8 in the morning the next morning, he was still going somewhere else. And, uh, and I was sitting in Bill Chaves' office and saying, okay, well, we're going to move on to plan B and what we're going to do. And, you know, maybe it's next year all of a sudden I'm looking down, hey, Vern's calling. It's about 9.15 <laughs> a.m., you know. And, and even with that, that usually That usually is call. when you're getting that one. Um, and uh, he just said he went back over all of it and knew that the right place to be as a quarterback and the right place to be was, you know, and, and, and sometimes it's, it's tough. You're 17, you're 18 years old. That's a hard decision. I mean, you're talking about the next four or five years. So I don't blame anybody who's in a, you know, a tough spot there. And sometimes you go on that last visit and it's what you remember the most. And he had gone somewhere else on the last weekend. So I think he went back over it and discussed it with his family. And yeah, that was a pleasant surprise, you know, on, on signing day morning. Now, not all the uh, the letters are in, but more letters can come in, and so there's going to be an official release from the university later on today detailing all the signees, giving you all the information on on, on those young men as we uh, as we go through the day. Is it good to have, uh, you know, in the past we've done luncheons here, so is it kind of good to have things out of the way here? The crowd here uh, behind us is going to get about a half hour with you, and, and, and then you guys are uh, the haze in the barn. I love this. I absolutely love this. So, I mean, I know it was, uh, you know, for all of us, I, you know, people are asking me, how's it going to go? How's it? I go, your guess is as good as mine. I'm just going to listen to where I'm supposed to go and talk when I'm supposed to talk and, you know, all that stuff. But in terms of how this has turned out and the feeling of being able to see these recruits as they come in that real time and the live TV. And, and again, back to what, you know, you guys have done here at SWX, you know, can't thank you enough. And, and just our whole, you know, just our whole process with, with, you know, Kyle Bruce, Kyle Hoop, and everyone else that's involved with this and Ken Halpin and, and everything that goes into it. And I'm forgetting a ton of names, so I got to stop there. But, uh, but basically what we're doing here this year, if you have, if it's my choice, I'm going to do whatever I'm told. I, I got no problem with that. But if you want to know my opinion, I think this is, this is great. Bo, thank you very much. We All appreciate right. it. Thank you. Folks, thank you. We had a blast. I hope you did too. And thank you at home as well for tuning into this first of its kind here on SWX Signing Day 2016. For the voice of the Eagles, Larry Weir, I'm Sam Adams saying so long. We will have comprehensive signing day coverage tonight on our half-hour sports show, SWX Tonight. We hope to see you then.